It's a South Buffalo story that's not about Snowvember, but the snow did play a role in the tale of one man's evolution from Buffalo boy to beloved broadcaster. In this week's Queen City Chronicles, Eddie Dobashevitz reflects on the journey from Keppel Street to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with the legendary Danny Nevis. <laughs> Sometimes when it snows in Buffalo, it's real serious business. But it was another snowstorm, the blizzard of 77, that took Danny Nevereth from a boy next door in the streets of South Buffalo to one of the most beloved broadcasters in Buffalo's history. And in some ways, it all started right here. Most of the people in the neighborhood worked in the steel plant or they worked on the railroad. Growing up on the streets of South Buffalo, Danny Nevereth knew from a pretty early age what he wanted to do. He wanted to be on the radio. The career that I chose and was successful in was from listening to radio and watching early television. But no one starts at the top. There's a thing called paying your dues. But I remember going to WGR, applying for a job there. I was a, a senior in high school. She said to me, oh, you have to be a college graduate and have at least three years broadcasting experience before they'll even consider talking to you. Oh, oh. Three years later, I was working at WGR Radio. It wasn't quite that easy, though. He had already paid some of those dues working in small markets like Cottersport, Pennsylvania, and even starting up a makeshift radio station at the Babcock Boys Club with some childhood friends. We'll MC the dances, we'll play the music for the dances, and we'll do, uh, we'll do our own broadcasts of the football games, looking out the window in the back. And, and then we started a regular schedule, and we had commercials. As exciting as it was being on the air anywhere, as the new kid on the block, you had to be realistic. When Clint Buhlman was on in the morning, there was no way you could be number one. Determined as he was, it was Mother Nature and a good attitude that helped him get to the top. As bad as the blizzard was for so many people, it was the best thing that ever happened to me, personally. Clint got cranky. People thought they were going to die. We might not make it. And I listened to him, and I picked up a lot of stuff from him. So I was kidding around. I threw some lines out in that, and I'll never forget what he told me. He said, kid, you're trying too hard. Good morning. So just what is the secret to such a successful career? I, I pick and choose. I'm a sum of all of those original things put together and then some of my own thought, and that's who I am. How did the weather outside come about? There was a show here called Dialing for Dollars. The Channel 7 people came and said that they were interested in having me come over from the morning show and then do the weather at noon. Well, the general manager of the radio station didn't like that idea. So he said, okay, we're going to compromise. You can do the weather, but I don't want you to do dialing for dollars. Just one problem. He wasn't a trained meteorologist. The lack of experience never stopped him before. So I put in the funny little film clips, and that covered the fact that I didn't know what I was doing. You've done so much. What do you think would be your proudest moment? My proudest moment is my family. It's nothing to do with broadcasting, really. Even with all his success, he's still just a regular guy. I'm Dan Nevereth from Keppel Street, South Buffalo, St. Monica's Bishop Timon High School. That's it. From South Buffalo, I'm Eddie Dobashevitz, and these are the Queen City Chronicles.